All right, back again, Luke here. And today, what I want to do is show you guys a new project that I'm going to be working on here. As you can see in front of you, uh, this is a Killer Instinct arcade PCB. And uh, you can see it written over here in the corner. Uh, this is something that I wound up doing a trade with uh, Wicked Clown NZ or Chris, as uh, some of you may know him. Uh, we decided to do a trade over some uh, like Naomi stuff and parts like that over this board here because I've been trying to get a working Killer Instinct board. If you guys remember a long time ago I had a Killer Instinct board that uh, just had a burnout uh, CPU on it and because the CPU was toast on it could never get the thing to work. So unfortunately that, uh, that one is still sitting waiting for a CPU but this is a second one and this one here just arrived today and uh, the key thing behind this one this one also does not work but some things that you can notice about this is it's highly corroded uh, there's a lot of corrosion all over this board on uh, all the chips here and uh, the camera probably won't pick it up as uh, as corroded as it really is in person but uh, the, each one of these chips here has some rust on it and uh, yeah, it's not looking so uh, so great, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the, the different chips here, and then I'm going to try and see about cleaning them up. The uh, different sockets here as well look pretty bad. Here's, uh, here's some of the caps on the end, or the, uh, yeah, you can see the capacitors there. And uh, the inside, each one of these things, it looks like they've been sitting in, in this spot for a very, very, very long time. Uh, see if we can get one of these chips out but the whole board is going to need to be scrubbed down uh, completely now this one doesn't look too bad you can see though uh, some of the legs here they're rusted uh, I don't know what that is like some hair or something <laughs> but uh, yeah this thing's this whole board's gonna have to be uh, taken apart and scrubbed up so I'm gonna use some uh, soap and water on it and then I'm gonna use uh, maybe some vinegar a toothbrush and some lemon juice etc try and go around all these different spots to try and clear out all this uh, grime that's in there and corrosion and there are a couple of uh, traces that look scratched on the back which I'll check for continuity and make sure those things are okay but uh, you can see the board's seen better days. It, uh, it doesn't look completely hopeless, which is one nice thing, you know, so far. Uh, and this capacitor here is going to have to be replaced. That's just a really leaky, nasty looking thing. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take off as many of these components as I can. But if we take a look at the bottom here, uh, where is it? Da -dun -da -dun. There's one spot on here that's a bit scratched up. And I'm trying to find it. Well, I guess it's over here. Uh, you can see some of the solder mask here has been scratched off. It may not look too bad here from the top, but uh, we'll check to make sure that that still has continuity to it. And if it does, then uh, you know we'll we'll just kind of patch over it, put a little bit of paint over it to try and keep it uh, from corroding anymore. Uh, you know, although it's just been scratched. Uh, if it doesn't, then we're going to have to do some patchwork here and try and get that thing to work. But first things first, we're going to have to remove all of these socketed. EPROMs to try and get this thing uh, uh, cleaned up a little bit better and then we're gonna go around the whole board and try and scrub this thing up so that's what we'll get on next here just want to give you guys a little bit of a look at what it looks like right now I'm not going to uh, go through the effort of trying to plug this thing in right now because I don't want to do any more damage to the board than uh, is necessary and in this current situation the only thing that could probably happen would be chips overheating or you know something sparking so I don't want that to happen so I'm just gonna go and dive into it and start Scrubbing it up here, see if we can get it a bit cleaner. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will resolve some of these issues. Maybe some of it's just a contact issues with some of these chips, but we'll get on that and give it a go here. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so as you can see here, I've got all the EPROMs out. And uh, you can see that uh, a lot of them are rusted and uh, quite uh, quite tattered here. On the inside here, there is, they're qu quite dull as well. So what I'm going to have to do is go around these legs here and try and clean them up. And uh, a lot of these are for the sound, so uh, not such a, a big deal. Uh, those can be changed out. There is one, though, that is actually for the boot ROM. So what I'm going to have to do is try and you know clean that up as well. That could be part of the problem, why it's uh, not starting up, but definitely there's a lot of corrosion all over the board so what I'm gonna do is get on this and try and clean these things up and then uh, yeah I'll come back in a few so see you in a bit
Alright, so as you guys can see here, all I've done so far is I've just uh, washed the board. Uh, I put in the uh, the ROM set that I had here for my other uh, Killer Instinct board that I was trying to get working. Uh, this thing's just been sitting around for a long time. Uh, I haven't done anything else, just tried to you know clean it up a little bit and uh, figured we could flip the old switch on here and show you guys what it's uh, doing or what it's not doing. <laughs> so far all we're getting is this which uh, yeah is the game not booting so what I'm guessing is that could be uh, directly related to all of these uh, you know these really dull solder joints on here and what we're gonna have to do is just go around all of those uh, what I did is I replaced uh, this one with my broken uh, Killer Instinct board here I replaced the cap that was on there and you can see this one's in much nicer condition so what I'm gonna do is uh, mess around with this one a little bit more see if I can get the lights to actually come on or such but uh, that's gonna require a bit of some reflow on these things so I'm gonna go ahead and get on that and see what we can do about at least getting the lights to come on because it's not doing much now so we'll be back in a little bit Okay, so as you can see here, um, unfortunately after giving this uh, a lot of uh, flux, putting a lot of flux around each one of the, the uh, components to try and uh, make sure everything was situated and seated in place, I could not get this thing to fire on. So if you notice here, the CPU is now taken off and uh, I have the CPU here. What I'm going to do is uh, clean up the legs on the bottom of it and uh, I'm going to attempt to attach the, uh, the CPU from this board back onto this board. This board at least before was showing a little bit of life. Um, it did show some scrolling blue screen action uh, towards the beginning uh, when I did have it uh, going and then after that you know it, it finally died but uh, I'm going to see if I can just transfer this one over here because this one wasn't doing anything so that's where we're at right now I'm gonna try and clean up these uh, legs here and then we're gonna go around the outside here and try and put this uh, put the CPU down and see what happens so we'll be back in a little while all right so as you guys can see here I've got the uh, the new CPU on here I actually changed out that cap again with the other one uh, I went around uh, the Altera chips I went around all the surface modest chips the big ones that I could and um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if this is uh, better or what. You can see one light's coming on. And you can hear the tone, but then uh, we just go into this uh, glitched mess here. And it doesn't move from this. Uh, as you can see, it's got both lights on there. It says that the uh, sound is active as well as the, uh, the hard drive is active, but it doesn't change anything more than this. So... What I'm guessing is maybe it's a RAM issue, possibly? I don't know. It seems vaguely familiar that uh, it was doing something like this before, a long time ago when I first got the board. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the extent of what it's doing right now. Granted, I have no clue on if this uh, compact flash drive really does work as I, uh, I wound up ordering a compact flash drive off of the net. And when I got that for my gauntlet stuff, it didn't seem to work for my gauntlet one. So I'm not sure if the, it could be the, the compact flash or it could be the board. But I'm guessing it's probably something on the board. Nonetheless, I guess what I'll do is uh, <laughs> try and go around some more of these chips here and see what we can find out. But just want to show you guys a little bit of a difference, I guess, a little bit of a plus in some ways. Uh, the thing is actually, you know, starting to make sound. So I'll get on this and try and mess around with those other uh, surface-mounted chips and see if we can get anything else to change on this. So be back in a bit.